Yo, what's up everybody? Airsoft Man 819 here yet again with another PC video. Um, so this video is going to be the final video on my daily driver, or what I would like to think is my final video. Um, I update my PCs so often that you know I might you know be able to make videos for the rest of my life if I made a video every time I upgraded my PC. But um, I definitely made some some big upgrades uh, compared to what you guys saw last time. So everything is still in an Antec 300 case, but this is actually the Antec 302. So I know I told you guys in the first video I made on my 300 build that Antec made a sequel to the 300 um, called the 302. And um, after upgrading my graphics card, I realized that my 300 was kind of running out of space. Um, it didn't have very good cable management and the hard drive cage was set up in a way where bigger graphics cards don't necessarily fit very well in it. So I was kind of forced to get a bigger case. So I figured, well, you know, I did say there was a sequel and I said it was better. So I might as well go ahead and get it so I can put all my new stuff in. So even though this looks a lot like my uh, uh, 300 build that I previously made a video about, it's actually a completely different case. So I actually have the original 300 over here, which I'm going to awkwardly bring into frame. So uh, I said I was bringing it in awkwardly. So <laughs> here's the original 300 that uh, I had originally built this system in. But um, it is now empty and has nothing inside of it. But you can kind of see the similarities here. I might show more similarities. I don't know. Um, I might make a video comparing them directly. But honestly, if you just go watch my previous video, you can find out everything about the original that you need to know. So I might not do a comparison of it in this video. So um, the specs that are the same, um, the motherboard, RAM, and processor are the same. Um, it's the Asus Prime B450M um, Micro ATX motherboard. I've got a Ryzen 5 3600 6-core um, processor in here. I have 16 gigs of Crucial Ballistics 2666 memory in here that has been overclocked to 2800 megahertz. And um, the new specs that I have updated, I have updated my um, CPU cooler and I have updated my graphics card from a GTX 1060 to a GTX 1080 for the Win 2. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and start going over the case and some of the differences. So you notice um, on the 302, the front is curved. Whereas on the original 300, it was just straight lines up and down. Whereas this kind of has like a curve out to it. So I honestly really like how the front of this looks. The front is definitely where a lot of the changes were made. Um, it's just a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. Um, just the overall dimensions are just a little bit different, but the look and the aesthetic are the same. So you still have three five and a quarter expansions on the front, no three and a halves. Um, you have two 120 mil fans in the front. Uh, the mounting system is completely different on this case. It doesn't have the cool swing outdoors that the original 300 has. It has just basic fan mounts, which I'll show you. But a cool improvement that they did make is that the front two USB ports are now USB 3s instead of 2. So now you have USB 3 um, compatibility on the front. You have your mic and headphone jack, your concealed um, reset button, and your power button to the right. So pretty simple front. Um, I do like how they did it. Um, I got my Ryzen 5 badge here and tech on the front. So we'll go ahead and turn it to the side. One difference is that the power supply, um, the, the case is a little higher up off the ground, just enough for a power supply to take in air from the bottom. And they added a power supply filter right here. So uh, I'm gonna have to kind of slide the case close to the edge of the workbench to get it out. But you can see here, there is a filter for the power supply. So you can turn your power supply to where the intake fan is facing down. So you can actually stand your power supply right side up, whereas with the 300, even though it had a bottom mounted power supply, you couldn't angle your fan down because there was no filter or intake on the bottom of the case. So now you have that, so now you have this filter that the original does not have. So there's that. Um, I'll go ahead and dismount this just so I can show you guys a little bit of the differences. 
So you can see on the top, you have water cooling grommets. Um, the original 300 does not have that. Here's the original 300, by the way. So you can see how the front of the original 300 is straight, whereas on the 302, it is curved. And obviously you have the USB 2s, whereas on this one, it is three. And you can see you have, and honestly, you're probably not gonna be using these because these are for an external reservoir. And that's really not how water cooling is done anymore. Although you could do it and they do work. So, I mean, you do have the option. So that honestly is really the only way you can water cool this case. Whereas with the original, you can't water cool it at all. So um, I recycled all of my fans except for um, the two in the exhaust part of the case. So basically, um, I have my purple uh, V-True fan mounted in the side. and take the side panel off move this camera back because i've got it way too close for comfort so we have our thumb screws removed and there's no latches or anything you just grab the back and pull unhook it from the front and then we will go ahead and unplug our side fan and i do have a filter on this fan so it's not blowing dust in my case. It is set as an intake for the graphics card. Go ahead and take this panel somewhere out of the way. So you can kind of start to see the differences on the inside right away. Um, there are a lot more holes for cable management, so I don't have cable snaking all over the thing. Um, my cooler is obviously different. Uh, the hard drive cage is a big area where things have been changed. So on the original 300, the hard drive cage was basically flipped to where the hard drive slid in through the back. And that actually made this cage reach further into the case, which made it harder for bigger graphics cards like this to be slotted in. So your five and a quarters are now toolless. There are no screws or anything. It's just spring loaded. Sorry, people are racing motorcycles outside. It's that time of year. Um, so they're just spring loaded. You just slide your drive in and it snaps in and to take it out, you just hold this button. So very simple if you did want to add a, a disk drive. So that is another difference. Um, overall, it's just cleaner, you know. Um, it looks better on the inside. Um, they put a lot more attention to cable management. You can see there are actual cable management holes where you can run your cables through, which I have obviously done. Um, I'm using the stock um, exhaust fans that came with this because this was this was actually a new case. So unlike the original 300 where the original top fan had started to wear out, this one is brand new. So even though it's an older Antec fan, it's a two-speed, um, it still is pretty quiet because it's new. So same thing with the uh, exhaust fan. It's the Antec fan that came with it. Um, and the cool thing about these fans is they are two-speed and you can control the speed from the back. So you have a high and a low position on the back here that you can basically adjust the fans depending on your workload. So if, say if you're playing a really demanding game, you can reach back here and turn these two switches up and your top exhaust will increase in speed and so will your back exhaust so you can move more hot air out of your case. So a uh, pretty cool design. So my Wi-Fi card is still the same. It's a Rosewill Wi-Fi 6 card with built-in antennas. That's plugged in right underneath my 1080. The 1080 that's in here is a EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 for the Win 2 edition with the improved um, cooler. So uh, it stays nice and cool. It's actually so heavy, I had to buy a jack to uh, jack it up because it was starting to sag in its slot. Um, I've got it pretty straight. It's a little, just a hair bit saggy, but uh, not too bad. Uh, Basically, this thing takes so much wiring, it's impossible to hide it completely. It takes two 8-pin connectors because it's a beast, but I kind of have them wired tied together. I have the rest of my cables running through this hole right here. Uh, same power supply. You can kind of see the intake filter, which is a cool addition. You have a, a SSD mount here in the bottom if you want to mount a traditional 2.5-inch uh, um, SSD down here. You can. I have my jack stand for my graphics card. Uh, the uh, prop I'm using for my graphics card is by a company called Up Here, and they make single GPU mounts, uh, brackets, and they make dual GPU. Uh, because my GPU is so far from the bottom, I had to buy the dual mount, and I just use both of the clamps. I use one on the top and one on the bottom to kind of clamp it in place. So, yeah. 
My CPU cooler has been updated to a Zalman heat pipe cooler. It is a 92 millimeter fan, solid copper, and it is three heat pipes. So definitely a uh, upgrade from the AMD stock cooler that was in here originally. And also an upgrade from the uh, V-True top-down cooler that is now in the retro Antec build over there. So really good cooler. It's actually a, a speed adjustable. It comes with a, um, a, a little dial to adjust the speed of the fan because this being an older cooler, it doesn't really use the motherboard to control the fan speed. So you have to do that manually, which I don't mind because I like messing around with those settings anyway. But you can see I have it mounted vertically. So the fan is essentially blowing air straight up and out the top because it's lined up perfectly with my top exhaust. So it is literally bellowing hot air out of the top when I uh, turn, especially when I turn this top exhaust fan on max. So even under full load, I can play Call of Duty um, Cold War at 1440p or 4K and my processor never exceeds 62 degrees. And that's with no water cooling at all. So... That's for everybody who says that you have to water cool to get decent temps. So there's your front fans. They actually, even though they're, the mounts aren't as cool, you do still have the two little holes for your fan plugs to go through. So hmm, I don't think there's really much else I can show you on this side. Um, because this has cable management, I will take the other panel off, even though it's going to make the video longer. I'm sorry. There's people that want to see this crap, so I'm going to show them. So yeah, um... Didn't really like the fact I had to put the uh, graphics card mount in there, but it doesn't look too bad. It's magnetic. It sticks to the bottom. It holds the graphics card up, keeps it from falling out of the slot. So uh, I can't really complain much. So another addition that they made to this case that you haven't seen yet um, is on the other side. I'll show you that real quick. Uh, it's hard to move this thing. It's heavy. Oh. So you have motherboard... Uh, motherboard cooling. Um, this fan right here is not on the original 300. It's just a flat side panel, no fans. Um, basically, this aims right at the back of your processor mount, right at the back of your processor. So basically, you can set it to either blow air straight onto the back of your processor, or you can set it to exhaust heat away from your processor. And I actually have this set as an exhaust because it's so close to the motherboard that if I set it as an intake, the air will literally hit the motherboard, bounce off of it, and try to come back out anyways. So I figured instead of working against the air and making this an intake and just trying to force air in there that's not going to stay, I flipped it around and made it an exhaust. So now it's exhausting air away from the uh, um, motherboard. So pretty neat setup. It, it honestly, with this exhaust and this top exhaust, my temps are freaking amazing. And that's honestly one of the coolest things about the 300 and the 302 is even though they're older cases and they're mostly air-cooled cases designed for air cooling, they do a really good job at it just because of how they're designed. And this one is honestly the cream of the crop. Having this right here is a game changer because your temps on your processors uh, are going to stay so much cooler using this because you're, you're having cooling literally right at not only the front of the processor with your CPU cooler, you're having cooling at the back of the processor too with this motherboard fan. So really cool design. So this fan did not come with the case. Um, I actually, this is an Antec fan from a different case that I put in here just to match the aesthetic. So I would have, you know, three Antec fans as my exhaust. So we'll take the side of this off. And I'm, I'm going to apologize because I'm just now getting started at this. So I'm not even going to move this panel away. I'm going to leave my uh, motherboard fan plugged in. The motherboard fan is actually an old Antec tri-cool, and it has a little switch on it here, so I can adjust between high, medium, and low for my motherboard cooling. And it literally aims the fan right at the back of your motherboard right here. And you have a nice open cutout, uh, so you can mount a back plate um, if you're wanting to update your CPU cooler. Um, this little box right here is actually my adjustment for my CPU cooler. Um, if I turn, I'm not going to turn it because I don't want to mess up my setting. But if I turn this little knob right here, it will actually adjust the speed of my processor uh, fan. So um, a lot of cable management room back here. Obviously, I have most of the cables kind of stuffed back here, and they fit just fine. Um, whereas with the original 300, there's really no room. You have this big hole right here. So there's a lot of room to run your cables. So much more room here than on the original 300. You have such a nice gap 
between uh, the case and the uh, side panel. So uh, you have plenty of room to just be lazy and throw all of your cables back here, which is exactly what I have done. So uh, I'll clean it up over time. But honestly, I think it turned out pretty good, with especially how quickly I uh, threw it together. So. Because the cable management on it now is even better than it was in the original 300. Because the original 300, I'm really self-conscious about my cable management. And in the original 300, I just wasn't able to get my cables where I wanted them. So I'm glad I was able to get this case and do what I wanted with the uh cables so it's still not perfect but um being ocd it'll never be perfect in my eyes anyway so let's go ahead and take the front off so i can show you guys how the front intake fans mount because that's really the only thing i have left to show you besides this 1080 for the win all lit up and pretty which i'm going to be showing you in a minute because graphics card content is hard to come by so i figured i will tickle your fix so uh, like the original 300, it just has the three clips and the front panel just comes off. Um, you have a dust filter just like the original that you can snap out and wash off or vacuum out. And the front fan mounts are actually much simpler. They're just through, through screws. Basically, it comes with the screws in the case. You just put the screw through the fan and screw it to the front. That's it. You know, no fancy swing out doors. You know, it's simpler to do it this way. It's cheaper. It's more cost effective. And honestly, doing it this way, it's easier to install the fans. And honestly, if you really wanted to, you could put a 240 millimeter radiator up here. If you really wanted water cooling in this thing, you could put a 240 AIO up here, no problem. There's enough space um, in the holes in the case behind these fans to run your uh, coolant lines through. But uh, you're going to have to do a custom loop on it because an AIO is just isn't going to fit in here. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you want to water cool this case, be prepared to build a custom loop for it because no AIO ever is going to fit in it. So... Everything is nice and tight, unlike the old 300, which was a little loose and creaky, which is another reason I wanted to get, uh, get rid of it and upgrade, because the original 300 that I had built in had some miles on it, and this one is brand new. So we'll go ahead and hook it up, let you guys see it, hear it. Um, I'll keep the side panel off so you guys can see the 1080 and all of its glory. Even though it's an older card, it's still one of the best. Argue with me. Go ahead and turn it on. Let you guys see her in action. Really, really happy with how this turned out. This can game at 1440p or 4K pretty much with ease. It, it struggles a hair bit with 4K because the 1080 is kind of aging a little bit. But um, overclocking the graphics card and the processor a little bit uh, can easily get you there to 4K. Um, and another mod that I did is I took a couple Airflow PCI slot covers and put those in here that way instead of having solid you know pci covers all the way down i have these two with airflow that way the intakes can blow a little bit of cool air past the graphics card so the 1080 stays nice and frosty in here processor stays nice and frosty thanks to the zalman cooler and the up up blow effect that i have going on with the hot air and stuff everything stays nice and nice and cool i mean I have yet to get the graphics card or the processor in this to exceed 70 degrees. So it performs really, really well. I still have the same hard drive in here. It's not even really a hard drive. It's an SSD. It is an Inland NVMe, one terabyte SSD. I do plan on upgrading my storage. I'm probably going to get like a, a two terabyte storage hard drive to put in one of these cages to just up my storage just a little bit because this is my daily driver. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on my daily driver PC. I hope you guys like how it turned out because I know I do and I really like the way it games. Uh, I think the next step in this journey is to go ahead and film some gameplay of this and uh, show you guys exactly what it can do. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned for more interesting videos from the Airsoft Man 819 channel. And I'll catch you guys later. I love you. Goodbye.